first of all, thanks you, uh, thank you guys for coming to hear me speak. My name is uh, Aaron. I'm a senior at Mizzou, and I spent last fall in my capstone class working with Judd and um, a girl named Susu who graduated last semester, working with the Columbia Daily Tribune, building a video production model for them. Uh, before I start, I want to thank the Potter Conference for having me. It's very thoughtful of you guys to have me speak. This is a really big opportunity for me, and I'm really excited to speak to you guys. <laughs> so, um, um, so we, our assignment was to build a video production model for the Columbia Daily Tribune. Um, me and Susu are, or were both um, video people, I guess, but we weren't really business people. We were more journalists who filmed videos, and so we didn't really know how to get into the business world. Um, so when they came to us with an assignment, they said, we want to do videos, and they assumed that we would know how to just build videos for their entire uh, website. Um, which is a, a bit of a daunting, a bit of a daunting task, and I'm sure uh, many of you had the same sort of question: how to build videos for your website. Um, so we started off with three big ideas, um, sort of to uh, compartmentalize the problem. Right. So there are three main facets of building a video production model. There are content practices, which is like what goes inside your videos, what they're going to be about, how long they're going to be, who's going to be in them, um, what type of footage you're going to use and then things of that nature. And then there are business practices, how you're going to sell ads on them, how you're going to make money off them, um, who you're going to sell them to, who their ads are going to be for. And then personal practices, who's editing your videos, who's shooting your videos, what cameras you're using, um, where you're filming them, stuff like that. Um, so then we started to ask those questions of our client, and being that they were um, they didn't have a lot of experience in video, obviously. That's why they came to us. They couldn't really answer them for us, so we decided to do our own research. Um, so we, the first thing we did is we went to their analytics to figure out what their, what their audiences were, because that's a really important question to ask before you start making videos. Um, so we went to their analytics, and we established some pretty key things about their audience. The first one is Columbia Daily Tribune, based in Columbia. A lot of their audience is in Columbia, obviously. Right off the bat, we were able to figure that out, and that helps when you're thinking about advertising and when you're thinking about what videos to make. A lot of our videos you'll see later. I hope, I hope we have enough time where I can show you guys some of the videos we made, um, like the template videos for the Daily Tribune, um, sort of are very clearly catered to a Columbia audience. Um, and we did that with an intention. Um, the next thing we looked at was the loyalty of their audience, or we discovered that they have a very loyal, very loyal following. You'll see that 60% in this month-long time frame um, Sixty percent of their people are returning visitors, meaning they come back once within that time frame. That they have um, a session duration of over five minutes, which is above average. They have a bounce rate, which means that they go, they click into beyond the homepage of less th of less than fifty percent, meaning that the majority of people are going into the next link after they get to your homepage. And the returning users, their bounce rate is under forty percent. I mean, the people who are loyal, they're coming to the website with intention. They're looking for something. They go into it. They get what they want, which is good. There's a lot of energy. When people come to the website, they're looking for something, you know? Um, and the, la the last thing we found, or one of the last things we found, um, was the session duration. So you'll see a lot at the top, there's this cluster that, you know, 48% of people who are leaving after they get to the homepage, oh, what is this website? I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm going to leave. Um, but then you'll see this bottom cluster of people. 61 to 180 seconds, so a minute to three minutes, three minutes to 10 minutes, 10 minutes to 30 minutes. There are a lot of people spending a lot of time on the website. That's a huge chunk of people. Maybe you want your video to be only a minute, two minutes long. You want to make sure people are going to be on your website for a minute to two minutes long. You don't want to make sure that they're just looking at headlines and leaving, because if they do that, they're probably going to watch your videos. But at the Columbia Daily Tribune, they're staying on the website. So we, had, we were pretty confident that they could have videos on their website with some amount of success. And the last thing we looked at, which was one of the things I didn't expect to find, but it really jumped out to us, is that, and this is something that they mentioned actually when we met with them the first time, is that their visiting pattern, their the users, they come to their website, so like any, every one of these bumps that you see is one day over this month, and the peaks of those bumps, those little mountains, are at 2 p.m., and on either side there's mini peaks, so it's like 9 a.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m. So at 9 a.m., everyone gets to work. They check the news. At 5 p.m., everyone goes home. Is there any news updates? But at 2 p.m., 2 p.m. is a sort of artificial 
uh, content bump that they've made, everyone knows who reads the website knows that at 2 p.m., Daily Tribune regenerates their website. And so they go there at 2 p.m. Oh, there are probably things from the newspaper that I haven't seen yet, and I'm coming to the website to go find them. We thought that was really interesting to, to learn about. We didn't expect that their website would be able to dictate the terms of their users' uh, behavior, which is really important when you're thinking about where to put videos on your website, when to publish them, how to publish them, how to get users to look at them. It sort of empowers the people who are making the website to dictate how people watch their videos, basically. So then we started looking at circulation sizes. Newspapers with similar circulations who had video presences on their website. We went through a bunch of websites, uh, we went through a bunch of newspapers and their websites like this. But um, one of the things we found, obviously, the Columbia Daily Tribune doesn't have a, a video presence on their website. Neither do a lot of these papers. They're all sort of the same. Um, they all have similar size circulations. Um, they don't really do a lot of video. They want to, but they don't really. They can't really do a lot of video. Um, the exceptions, you'll see the first two right under the Columbia Daily Tribune, the Athens Banner Herald and the Kenosha News do some interesting video stuff. We're going to look at those right now. So the, Ken the Kenosha News in Kenosha, Wisconsin, um, this is um, a little bit down their homepage, so it's not like the very top, but if you scroll down a little bit, they have a little uh, bo box on the side for their videos. It's built into their home section, and they have their own video player, which is something that's worth noting. They don't, they're not using YouTube or another content service. They have their own built-in video player. And in their video player, they have a whole, they have a wide array of content for their videos. So one of their big videos is called this, uh, their big video feature is called the Kenosha News Minute. So it's a video feature that they run two times a day, a minute long. Usually there's three stories that they do, kind of quick headline, uh, little blurbs after it with some borrowed video footage that they get from either TV stations or that they shoot themselves. And they have sponsorships underneath those, like framed around the video. So um, I don't know if we have a picture. Actually, we don't, I don't think. Um, but if you can kind of imagine it, it's like the video player. And then around it, it says, brought to you by, uh, I don't know, Kenosha Grocery Store, or whatever it's called, or Kenosha Car Dealership, or whatever. And they sell those sort of on rotation to like four different people, and then they'll come up differently every single time. Um, those are pretty easy. I talked to the people over there, and they said they were pretty easy to make. Um, they do them twice a day, so they do one in the morning, one at night, and they get a lot of traffic on them, actually, I think. Um, they told me before they were doing it once a week, the news minute, for like a little news wrap-up thing. For They were doing it once a week, and they were getting around 100, 200 people. And then they did it twice a day, and they were getting up into the thousands, near the 10,000s. They were getting a lot more people to watch their videos. And that drives up your money, obviously. Um, the other feature they were doing was a sport or athlete of the week. Sort of like a sports show. Um, one minute long, they were doing pre-rolls on those videos and they would cycle those in and out as well and sort of introduce a high school athlete in the area who had a big performance in last week's game or broke a record in a swim meet or whatever. Um, and they would get reporters to go film those events and then cut them up, make those videos. And they have more time to do that because obviously editing video takes a little bit longer, but if you do them once a week, it's not as much of a time crunch to get them in. Um, so, Right there, you saw two different ways that they sell their videos. The sponsorships, those are paid monthly by the people who want to sponsor. They're 12-month long contracts. And they do pre-rolls, 15 seconds each. And they do those on contracts as well. So normally, with if you were looking at, for example, the New York Times, when they sell pre-rolls on their videos, they'll, do, um, they'll sell them at cost per thousand. And they'll do it like, I'm not sure what theirs is. Um, but like nine dollars per thousand per thousand views, and they'll get a lot because people watch the New York Times videos. Um, Kenosha doesn't do that. They'll sell those. They'll sell. They'll sell their ads, their pre-roll ads, at just three hundred dollars flat per month, regardless of how many people watch, regardless of any of that. Just three hundred dollars flat for each one. Um, one of the other places we looked at was the Lubbock Avalanche Journal in Lubbock, Texas. Um, 
they have a sort of sports boutique website called redraiders.com, and they do a lot of interesting video stuff. Um, you see, here's their homepage, and then a little bit down their homepage, you can see their, their video player. <coughs> um, so they do, obviously, like sports wrap-ups for their football games, basketball games, um, and they do, <coughs> they do monthly contracts as well. Um, and they sell those at 250 a month. They do sponsorships mostly for their videos, so their video borders are wrapped around. They, or rather, when the, they were doing that when we started doing our research. So we were doing our research over a three month period. We started, we first reached out to them, we called them, and they gave us these numbers for 250 a month. And then around October, they, we looked back at their website. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, and um, they were, they'd switched, they had switched their video player. So they were reworking their uh, content provider. They, before they were using one service to host their content, uh, their video content, and then in the middle of our research they switched because they wanted to introduce CPMs. So they started using CPMs at $15 each, $15 per thousand. Um, and from what I remember them saying, is that it takes, it's a little bit more difficult to get people to buy into CPM, um, just because the, the, one of the big problems is, so the New York Times can do it really easily because they're selling to Coca-Cola or Apple or Google, but when you're selling to the grocery store or the car dealership, and they're normally buying in flat rates, they're buying ad times in flat rates, <coughs> when you're trying to get them to buy into CPM, there's a little bit of a, something gets lost in translation. And so what, they're not sure what exactly they're buying, how, how much value they're getting out of it. Whereas if you tell them, you give us 250, we'll run your ads, they feel like they understand better what they're getting out of it. And so one of the things we talked to when we talked to people at Lubbock is that they wanted to introduce CPM, but they hadn't really done it before because it's a lot harder to, it's a lot harder to get those, to make those sales negotiations, to make those, those conversations go through. It's a little more, um, it takes more explanation, and some people aren't really comfortable with that, um, especially in smaller towns. And the last website we looked at was the Athens Banner Herald, Athens, Georgia, another college town. Um, they have a video section, again, on the right side of their homepage. Um, they were doing something Something a little different, so they were doing a, they were hosting videos on their website that were made by other people, sort of outsourcing their, uh, their role as a publisher, and getting, um, and running these like national like videos about Lady Gaga and Cate Blanchett, right? Nothing, nothing to do with uh, Athens, Georgia or anything like that, but they were taking advantage of their role as a publishing platform to make a revenue off the ads that these videos would then go out and sell on their own. So they were sort of outsourcing their video comp, their, uh, or rather this video company was using the Athens Banner Herald as sort of a way to outsource their publishing platform, and then they would get a cut of their advertising revenue. Um, and the flip side of that is they were also making, they were making local videos, um, sort of, so like they would go out and film Georgia football practice, or um, Georgia football tailgates, or Georgia football anything else. Um, and then they would host them on YouTube. And then, so what they were doing was that they, they were themselves outsourcing their publishing. They were making this content, and then they were outsourcing their publishing to YouTube. And in return, they would get a cut of their revenue. So they were getting kind of both ends of the stick, but from different places. Um, the way YouTube sells ads is they sell um, they get 55% of your revenue. Um, so you, you take home 45% and you sell it at a $7.80 CPM. I think that was as of uh, maybe last year, two years ago. That number might be different now. Um, so you don't take the majority of the money you get from selling videos, on, for making videos. Um, and that's assuming your videos are popular enough to generate ads, which not all videos, like if you put up a video on YouTube, and only 100 people watch it, YouTube isn't gonna run ads on that video just because you put it up. You have to like merit the, merit the demand for advertising. Um, but 
it's YouTube, and everyone watches YouTube, so it's a lot easier to do. Um, so yeah, we talked a little about this. They sell their sell their online video feed. They have an online video feed, and they get money from that, and then they make videos and put them on YouTube, and get a different section of money from that. So one of the big lessons from this, oh man, we're almost out of time. Um, one of the big lessons from this is um, if you really want to make a bunch of money, you need to have your own built-in video player. Otherwise, you're kind of getting short shifted. Um, you're really not making as much money as you could as if you had your own built-in video player, then you can run your own CPMs or run your own sponsorships and take 100% of the revenue. Um, we'll try to fly through this. So one of the things, when we went back to the Columbia Daily Tribune, actually we've done a bunch of our research, one of the things we encouraged them to do was to just try as much stuff as possible. So when you're making videos and when you have them done, it's really important to not really pigeonhole yourself into just putting your videos in a little corner on the right side of your home page. It's important to sort of get people's attention, say, hey, here are our videos, to mix them around, to try and engage in different ways, just to maximize the opportunity that your viewers have to watch your video. So one of the things we talked about is putting their videos right at the top of their home page, a premium home page placement, or if you see on the right, the top of the article placement, so having a video that's connected to a text article, then having that video embedded in the article so that way people can watch the video, then read the article. They're more likely to engage with it, but they're less likely to see it in the first place if they don't read the article about the pumpkin festival or whatever. So there are, there are a bunch of ad sales types, um, CPM sponsorships, pre-rolls, banner ads on videos, the banner ads, the little ads that come on the bottom of the video, you guys are very familiar. Um, and then outsourcing your advertising to YouTube is uh, probably the most popular one, I would say, but it's also the one that is, it's also the one that's easiest to do and also the one that gets you the least amount of money. Um, and we also encourage them to test out their, their videos, test out their products in a bunch of different ways to run different types of tests. So if you have one video, for example, maybe one day you put it, you embed it in an article, and the next day you put it at the top of your homepage just to see where it generates the most traffic. And that way you can figure out where your viewers are seeing your videos and how likely they are. And you can sort of test the variables out. Um, so we encourage them to do that. And then once we did that, we made uh, two template videos for them. Um, and then we kind of connected them together. We made an advertising video. So we made a video about um, this barber shop that opened in town. Um, sort of a bit, a bit of native advertising, kind of a business feature that we also cut up into a, into a, a pre-roll ad. And then we made the Sports Minute video, um, sort of a studio, a studio video about uh, Missouri football. <coughs> and sort of we produced it in our studio in the basement. Um, and I think, I don't know if we have time to watch them. Let's see if we can watch one. Can you guys see that? Cool. Can you guys hear it? Oh. I'm DJ Bishop. I'm a co-owner of Clean Cut Barbershop. I like to think of it as a trendier barbershop that has straight razor shaves, but also really good client service, like a full service salon, but is tailored to today's mail. Hello and welcome to the Columbia Daily Tribune Sports Minute. This is Tribune Sports Editor Joe Wall Jasper along with Tribune football beat writer Dave Morrison. Already we know some so staff basically, moves. Can you guys he's hear me? retained Andy Hill, he's retained Cornell So Ford. you can see that um, he's retained Ryan Walters. See a little banner right in the corner. Something that we Pat added Ivy. on purpose. Um, some of the others are in limbo. Um, so we added that on purpose and then we sort of set up three, three cameras and kind of uh, synced them all up and then edited them. It took about a day of editing um, to do all this, and we kind of, and then we borrowed a uh, B-roll from the the university has on their YouTube channel, a bunch of uh, highlights from games, and so we took that and we cut it up. Um, again, it took about a day, and then it took about a day for Susu to go out and film the the video that you saw the, in the beginning, the pre-roll, and that was from a larger video that she made um, that existed sort of as a bit of like a business feature. Ideally, it would get partnered with a a bit of a profile about the owners, and then 
she took that, cut it up into a 30 second pre-roll, and that way she could sell that. Ideally, you could sell that on a video like this when, when you want to. Um, I think you guys get the point. More highlights. All right. Um, yeah, we talked a little about that. So yeah, she did a lot of just kind of going into the studio, um, going to the barbershop, just making a basic video. Didn't take, wasn't very complicated. She used a DSLR because that was what the uh, what the Daily Tribune had already invested in. Um, so she made the decision to do that because they had already invested in it. Um, and so this is kind of our last our last slide. So I'll try and wrap it up real quick. Um, the main components for starting video are it's important to have your website be strong on its own already. Because if it's not, then it's, it's not a good assumption to assume that your videos are going to be the thing that brings people to your website. Usually, it's a complimentary piece. Usually, it's something that people see and they like it, but they don't go out of their way. They don't go out of their way to see it because they're, usually they're coming to your website for news. And then they see your videos and they like them. Um, second, it's important to get the right gear. That doesn't necessarily mean the best gear. It just means the right gear for you. So the Daily Tribune had already made an investment in DSLRs and uh, microphones that were a little bit um, higher quality because they had the ability to. Um, and But there are really good options for mobile if you want to ask Judd about them. He knows a lot about them. Um, and they are they look just as good. The Kansas City Star uses them, and they look their videos look great. Um, one of the big things also is when you're making those videos finally is to identify areas where your audience has a lot of demand for content from those areas. So obviously around here, Mizzou football, people can't get enough of Mizzou football. Um, one of the things we talked about also is their most popular, their most popular stories were usually these stories that um, were like these big events. So marathons around town, festivals, we talked about getting uh, getting videos out there for them. One of the things they started doing, actually, is they did a video series interviewing candidates, um, political candidates for the mayoral election. And they've gone really well. I talked to Jim Robertson, I think, last week. And he said that their videos for the, uh, their candidate series is uh, pretty popular so far. They're publishing it on YouTube, which is a disappointment to me, personally. <laughs> um, but they uh, they said they're, they're getting a lot of traffic on their videos. And that's just from. You know, deciding to try things out. You know, they wanted to do and they did it, and they look really good, and they're not very complicated. And that comes to the last thing: is when you're when you're making these videos, there really are no right answers. There's not like a the way like many journalists imagine. There's one good way to write a good news story. You start at the top with the best, and then you come to the bottom for the least important information. With a news video or with a feature video, there's really no one way to do it. Whatever your audience wants to see is they're going to they're gonna tell you based on clicking the video. So it's important to just try stuff out, important to mix and match, to play with different publication types, and to just, you know, do it, I guess. <laughs> um, I think that is everything. Do you have anything added? Do I have time? Uh, I will take a minute. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Judd. I'm the silent partner here. Few things I want you guys to walk away with. One, with online video, experimentation is going to eventually lead to profit, but just assume you're going to have to swallow some failure first. You're going to have things that work, you're going to have things that don't work. You will have more things that don't work than do work. Linking into that, the next thing I want you guys to remember, and this is really important, is that um, you are not going to make bags of money from a single video or a single client. And this is really important. You're not going to find the million dollar video, but what you might find is you might find four $250,000 videos or four $250,000 concepts. So if you look at this as I have $300 sponsor here and a $300 sponsor there and a $300 sponsor there and a $300 sponsor there over four products, $1,200 a month, eventually that's going to, uh, that's going to add up. So this is, a, this is a long game, not a short game. The thing is, look at your analytics. Everybody should be looking at the analytics. This was based off of Google Analytics, so it was free. Look at your analytics and figure out what people are coming to you for, because they will continue to come to you with 
video on that subject. Coming up with a new concept of video, as Aaron pointed out, is not necessarily going to attract people. Play to your strength, scaffold off your strength. Um, the other thing is about your advertisers. Your advertisers absolutely hate cost per thousand. They hate CPM because they want uh, rate reliability. Figure out what that number is that they're going to pay. Do that. When you start getting videos that are getting 10, 15,000 uh, views, then just jack the price up. I would avoid CPM as best I could. That's my summary. Can we get a big hand for Aaron, who stood up here and did this on his own? Thank you, guys. Thank you.